Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N's Robot Review in partnership with RoboCube, your destination for everything STEM. This week I'm going to be introducing you to the Intellino Smart Train. Let's check it out. Firstly, I'd like to say a big thank you to RoboCube for supporting the channel and providing me with the Intellino Smart Train. RoboCube have provided a lot of the robots that you can find on my channel and you can find them at robocube.co.uk. Now, the Intellino Smart Train is intuitive and fun. It's just like a familiar toy train, but it's also interactive and intelligent using robotic tech and apps and it's educational and accessible, teaching children coding and STEM skills. When you open up the Intellino Smart Train, there are some guides, there's a train and a carriage, and underneath that there is a box which contains a charging cable, all the pieces of track, and there is a box containing small coloured squares which are called snaps, and I'm going to be looking at these in this video. There are also three main apps that I downloaded for the Intellino Smart Train. These are the Intellino Edu Central, Intellino Play and Intellino Scratch. In the Intellino Edu Central app, when you open that up, this is where children can access guides to teach them all about the train and how it works. This builds up from basic understanding through to more complex combinations. There are also different activities that you can do with the train. In the instruction guides and in the activities, it tells you what type of track you need to build, what snaps you need, where to put these snaps and also what it is you are trying to achieve. This is a great way for children to be able to manage their own learning and move at their own pace. Now, earlier I said that the Intellino Smart Train is intuitive and fun because it's a familiar toy. And being a toy train, the first thing we need to do is put together a track. At one end of the box it shows you some possible track combinations, so I'm going to put together the track which looks like a figure 8 with the two straight edges running down the sides. If you're familiar with wooden train tracks, you'll know that the pieces just usually slot together. But with the Intellino Smart Train tracks, these pieces actually click together, making a tighter connection. And you can also purchase adapters to be able to attach the Intellino tracks onto your standard wooden tracks so you can actually extend the range of your train set. My son loves playing with his toy trains and he's got a battery powered train that when it's on the track and it's running, it just moves round the track freely and he can watch it go and he can attach carriages on or remove them. Once he's pushed that start button though, the train just runs round the track and he has no further control over it. It goes at the same speed and it just goes wherever the track takes it. This is where the Intellino Smart Train is different, using these plastic squares that we saw earlier called snaps. Now, as I've been putting my track together, you might have noticed that the pieces that have curves coming off of them have coloured squares attached to the track. These are built-in snaps. What happens is as the train is driving around the track, it reads the colour snaps that are on the track and this tells the train different things that you want it to do. These snaps cannot be removed, but as you saw earlier, we have a bag of snaps which we can attach onto the track. You'll notice that the track has wee slots running down the sides of it, and this is where you can click the snaps in. One of the guides that you receive with the train tells you different combinations of snaps that you can use to make the train do different things. On these bits of track with the curves coming off of them, the snaps are telling the train that there is a curve up ahead, and if you don't do anything with these, the train will make a random choice. It will either go straight on down the track, or it will choose to follow the curve. Before I look more at these curves and how you can actually tell the train which way you want it to go, I'm going to look at how we can change the train's speed. Now, every time you go to add snap instructions onto the track, you need to start with a white snap. This tells the train that instructions are coming up. If I put down a white snap and one green square, I'm telling the train to go at its slowest speed. If I put down a white snap and two green squares, I'm telling the train to go at its medium speed. 
and if I put down a white snap and three green squares, I am telling the train to go at its fastest speed. All of these snaps must be on the same piece of track. If they jump from one bit of track to another, the train will not read them and it will not follow the instructions. But you see, by putting those squares down, I've managed to affect the speed of my train. What I can also do is set up a pause for the train by using a white snap and then a combination of one red, two red or three red snaps. The more red snaps I have, the longer the pause of the train is going to be. So I'm going to set up a white with two reds to have the train pause for five seconds if it happens to choose to go around that right hand curve near where I've set the speed. You'll see as the train comes round that right hand curve it reads this pause message and it pauses on the track before continuing on its way. The train and the carriage have magnets on them so that they can be connected together. So I can put the carriage on the back of the train and then send the train and the carriage round the track. But by setting up a white and yellow snap combination, I can have my train drop off the carriage and the rest of the train carries on but the carriage stays behind. On any of the curves, if I want the train to keep going in a straight line, all I need to do is put a green snap at the end of the light blue dark blue or light blue red combination. If I want the train to actually follow the curve however, I need to add a different colour snap. If it is a light blue dark blue, then by adding another dark blue, I tell the train to follow the curve to the right. Or if it's a light blue red, by adding another red, I tell the train to follow that curve. This way you can control the train and make it go around the curves that you want it to go around. Although because of the way I've set up my track, as soon as I put one of these in for the train to follow the curve, it is just going to do loops at that section. Now this can actually be quite good to allow you to add snaps to other parts of the track while the train is doing that loop, and then you can remove that snap and the train can carry on and meet the other snaps that you've put down. So this is where the track actually becomes very interactive. You have control over what that train does. You can stop it wherever you want, you can make it follow different curves, you can change its speed, and you don't need to stop the train every time. You can add snaps as you are going along and while the train is still running. It's got no memory of the track that it's been over, it just reads the new snaps. What is important however is that each snap combination that you are putting down starts with a white square before the coloured snaps to make sure the train knows that instructions are upcoming. This is actually a very important part of coding because as you progress on to things like scratch coding you need to give an instruction to the program for when it is to start and that's what's being done with this white square. It's giving children the opportunity to have that computational and algorithm thinking without actually realising that's what they're doing. But they do know that there is an order to the instructions that need to be put down for the train to follow it correctly. If they make mistakes with putting down their snaps and the train doesn't follow the instruction, it gives them the opportunity to problem solve, to figure out why it's not working and make the changes that they need to make. Again, this is where the Intellino Smart Train is very interactive and it's getting that early computational and coding thinking working with children. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, a big thank you to Robocube for supporting the channel and sending me the Intellino Smart Train. Be sure to check them out at robocube.co.uk. Also be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date on all future content. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other robot review videos I've done so far, here to my STEM demonstration and explanation videos, and here to my STEM career interviews. This has been STEM with Mr. N's Robot Review, introducing you to the Intellino Smart Train. Mm -hmm.